Hi, I'm Jamie at Stonemeyer Games, and today I'm going to talk about my favorite mechanism in Jekyll and Hyde versus Scotland Yard. This is a follow-up to Jekyll versus High Hyde, a really, really cool dueling uh, two-player um, uh, trick-taking game that, that I really enjoyed, uh, with a little bit of asymmetry between Jekyll and Hyde. In this game, as far as I know, it was through the first two missions, there is no asymmetry between Jekyll and Hyde, but uh, instead of working against each other, you are working together against Scotland Yard. So one player is Jekyll, one player is Hyde, and uh, Scotland Yard has a, has a hand of cards that they are playing as well. The main hook of the game is that you are trying to balance the number of tricks. So you're trying to, uh, typically, at least in the two missions that we played, you are looking at whichever player had the lower number of tricks taken over the course of the round. So if if uh, you took three tricks, I took two, and the uh, the the Scotland Yard player took three, um, I have the fewest tricks of the two players. And so that means we would move our token forward two spaces. In the first two missions, there isn't a Scotland Yard token, but there is an element of the game where the Scotland Yard is chasing you, and you have to deal with another icon on the cards to deal with how they're how they're chasing you. You don't want them to catch them. So you're trying to get exactly here based on the player who has the lower number of tricks taken. So in general, you're trying to balance it, but in, as you re, in the second turn of each round, um, the second hand, there's always two hands per round, uh, you're trying to get a very precise number so you can end exactly here without Scotland Yard chasing you or, or catching you. Now, my favorite mechanism in the game is something that really could apply to any trick-taking game. So there are lots of trick-taking games where you... And I, I'm using this term, if you're not familiar with this term, it means that you are, each player is pl uh, playing a card from their hand with a number on it and typically a suit. And uh, typically the highest number of the lead suit wins the hand. There are exceptions to that deal due to like trump cards, higher value suits, things like that. But in general, that is the idea of a trick taking hand, a trick taking game. Um, but the, the, the hook in many of these trick and take games, there's a moment at the beginning of each round where you're choosing a few cards from your hand and you're passing them to another player. So you're passing a bunch of cards around the table. So you're giving up maybe a few cards and you're receiving a few cards. Um, this gives you a little bit of agency in trick taking games. So you're getting a random hand of cards, but you're deciding two cards that you don't want. But typically in these games, you're then receiving two cards as well, or one or two cards, however, whatever the number is. And you probably don't want those cards either. Maybe you'll luck into a, a into a suit that you wanted or a type of card that you wanted, but it doesn't always happen. The hook in Jekyll and Hyde versus Scotland Yard is you, both players have to create the hand for the third player, the Scotland Yard player that you're competing against. Um, every player needs to end up with eight total cards, but each player is dealt 12 cards. So we're dealt 12 cards. We need to give up four cards from our hand and put them into the hand of the Scotland Yard player. And you don't get any cards back. You are only giving up cards. And I can't tell you how good this felt, that you just get to have get rid of four cards that you, for the most part, don't want. Um, and you put them in the hand of the, uh, the, the, the Scotland Yard player. So you know what cards are going to be in their hand, or you know half of them, at least. You can't communicate the rest, uh, what you put to the other player, but you know half of them. And those cards are out of your hand from then on. You don't have to deal with them and you don't have to receive any other cards from any other player. This felt so good. I really, really like this element of Jekyll and Hyde versus Scotland Yard, that, that you, you're you giving up cards and you don't have to receive anything else. So there are probably other tricky taking games that do this, but I couldn't think of any of it offhand. Let me know in the comments if you can think of one, or if you have a different favorite mechanism in Jekyll and Hyde versus Scotland Yard, please let me know. I should also mention that I liked how the game ramped up. I mentioned that there are missions. It's essentially like you're playing a very simple version of the game and then a less simple version of the game and then a slightly less simple. And finally on mission four, I think you have all the rules in there. And then from then on, you're just playing with different versions of those rules that get a little bit harder as you go. Um, but you have all the rules in the game in that fourth mission. So I thought that was a really neat way to ease players into the game. It's a very short game too. So it's easy to play a few games in a row. We played two games in a row when we played. So yeah, let me know in the, your thoughts in the comments below if you've played this or if you can think of another trick taking games where you're giving up cards and you don't have to take any, any back. I'd love to hear your thoughts about that in the comments below. Thanks.